Assalamualaikum and welcome to our segment on Surah Yunus. Inshallah, today we will cover the fifth ruku of Surah Yunus, verses 41 to 53. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the true meanings of the Quran by the grace of its Prophet Muhammad. Amin. With this dua, let's begin the fifth ruku of Surah Yunus. Verse 41. Wa in kazabuka fakulli amali walakum amalakum antum bariuna mimma amalu wa ana bariun mimma tamalu. And if they reject you, then say, For me are my deeds, and for you are your deeds. You are exonerated from what I do, and I am exonerated from what you do. In this verse, we are being told that if we reject the Holy Prophet وسلم, and the message that he conveyed to us in the Quran, then Allah and his Prophet وسلم, are not accountable for us. If we choose to live our life for just ourselves, then we are not in care of Allah mode. We need to accept the truth of the message entirely. Being selective is not going to work. We are either all in or out. Let's go on to verses 42 and 43. And among them are those who listen to you. But can you cause the deaf to hear, although they do not use reason? And among them are those who look at you, but can you guide the blind, although they do not see? These verses describe those mentioned previously who reject the truth. They listen to the message of the Quran, but they don't understand. It is like they are deaf. They look at the signs all around them, but they can't see. It is like they are blind. They are just too stubborn and don't want to believe, even though their senses can sense it. How many people do we know like this? And more importantly, are we like them? Let's go on to verse 44. Inna laha la yazlimun nasa shay'in wa lakinna an nasa anfusahum yazlimun. Indeed, Allah does not wrong the people at all, but it is the people who are wrong themselves. In this verse, we are being presented a law that Allah does not wrong anyone, we wrong our own selves. This negates the notion that Allah has wronged us. Oftentimes, when something bad happens, we often direct it towards Allah, that this and that happened because it was Allah's doing. In light of the previous verses, those who reject the message become stubborn in their thinking, so they continue to blame Allah and external forces and negate Allah's law. This law has been mentioned throughout the Quran over again as a reminder for us. It's mentioned in Surah Al-Nisa in verse 40. And then wrongdoers are further mentioned in Surah Al-Anam in verse 21. Let's go on to verse 45. Wa yawma yahshruhum ka allam yalbasu illa sa'atan min al-nahari yata arafuna baynahum qad khasira al-lazina kazzabu bilqa illahi wa ma kanu muhtadin and for the duration when he will gather them as if they had not remained except a moment of the day they will recognize each other those will have lost who rejected the meeting with Allah and were not guided. In this verse, we see the word sa'atan, which means moment. Based on rejection and stubbornness, as previously mentioned, they don't believe that they will ever have to face or meet Allah. Unfortunately, these people will never get guided because they can't get out of their stubborn mindset. So Allah is saying here that they, along with the others who think the same way, will be gathered together. And those who reject Allah and the truth will be losers because they never were guided. Let's go on to verse 46. Wa imma 
nurianaka badalazi naiduhu aw natawaffa yanaka fa ilaina marjiuhum thumma lahu shahidun ala ma yaf'alun and whether we show you some of what we promised them or we take you in death to us is their return then allah is a witness concerning what they do we are not meant to live this life forever in this verse we are reminded of this fact and that when we depart from this life we will be returned to allah allah witnesses all that we do and we will be accountable for our deeds let's go on to verse 47 وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٌ فَإِذَا جَاءَ رَسُولُهُمْ كُدِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْكِسْتِ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And for every nation is a messenger. So when their messenger comes, it is judged between them in justice, and they are not wronged. Messengers are sent to all people to inform them about our purpose here and how to live and behave in the correct manner so we can attain success in this life and the hereafter. Those who follow the commands make it easy for themselves because they are fair and just in their ways and their actions don't lead them to do wrong. Let's go on to verses 48 and 49. Wa yaquluna mata hazal wadu in kuntum sadiqin. And they say, when is this promise if you should be truthful? Qul la amliku li nafsi dharran wa la naf'an illa ma sha'a Allah. لكل أمة أجل إذا جاء أجلهم فلا يستأخرون ساعة ولا يستقدمون. Say, I possess not for myself any harm or benefit except what Allah wills. For every nation is a term. When their term has come, they will not remain behind a moment, nor will they proceed. In this verse, we see the word ساعة again. which means moment. Moment can be defined as a fraction of time as it passes. The definition of this word can also be found in Surah Al-Nahl in verse 77, where it describes it as a glance of the eye or even nearer. Those who reject the truth ask to be shown it. So they are being reminded here that the truth will be shown to them when their term has come. This is a moment of truth. when it comes you will know without any second of delay this is also mentioned in surah al-ana in verse 67 where it says for every news is a fixed term and you are going to know let's go on to verses 50 and 51 kul a ra'aytum in atakum azabuhu bayatan aw naharan maza يَسْتَاجِلُوا مِنْهُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ Say, do you see if his punishment should come to you overnight or by day? For what of it would the criminals hasten? أَثُمَّا إِذَا مَا وَقَاءَ أَمَنْتُمْ بِهِ أَلْ أَنَا وَقَدْ كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تَسْتَاجِلُونَ Is it then that when it has occurred you will believe in it now? And you were for it hasty. Allah is asking the rejectors to ponder if they really want their punishment to come quickly. Is it then that they will believe? Like a criminal who commits a crime, then runs away or hides to delay or avoid being caught until he is caught and punished for the crime. Just like a criminal would never want to be punished so quickly for the committed crime, those who reject the truth should also not hasten to receive their punishment and be recompensed for their deeds. We are reminded again in Surah Al-Anbiya in verse 37 and warned to not be hasty for things to happen for us where it says mankind was created of haste I will show you my signs so do not ask me to hasten We should really reflect here and appreciate Allah's mercy the fact that everything happens in due time Allah gives us time and opportunities to repent and correct ourselves and accept and follow the guidance given to us by Allah and his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam only then can we attain success in this life and the hereafter let's go on to verses 52 and 
ثم قيل للذين ظلموا ذوقوا عذاب الخلد هل تجزون الا بما كنتم تكسبون then it will be said to those who had wronged taste the punishment therein are you being recompensed except for what you used to earn wa yastanbi'unak ahqq huwa qul'i wa rabbi innahu lahaq wa ma antum bimu jazi and they ask you to inform is it real say yes by my lord indeed it is real and you cannot escape it in light of the previous verses because of stubbornness and hastiness we wrong our own selves so we want to catch ourselves before we get stuck in a situation with a bad result we need to repent and correct our behavior believe in the truth of the quran and do what is required of us so we are not punished because the reality is that we will be accountable for what we did and recompensed for our actions at the end of this life this concludes our segment on ruku 5 of surah yunus let's briefly go over what we discussed those who reject the truth become so stubborn in their mindset that they are unable to listen hear or use reason to understand it which leads them to self destruction These verses encourage us to open our eyes and take notice of our surroundings and that is Allah's signs. We are the greatest indication of what exists in this whole universe and by observing the actions and conditions of ourselves and others we can uncover the reality. Have we ever truly observed our surroundings and the reasons behind people's behaviors and conditions or learned from the events that occur around us? May Allah grant us the ability to understand the Holy Quran and its true meanings in light of the life and guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this segment. Until next time. Sadaqallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah speaks the truth, the exalted, the great. Sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Muhammadin wa alihi wa sallam.